Okay, this is the third tutorial in our series for the Gothic Cathedrals course. We are going to be uh, taking a, another pretty big step forward. Um, and we're going to be 3D modeling uh, a, an example of a nave bay uh, elevation, um, which is going to be of a building that you all should be fairly familiar with, actually, at this point. Um, we're going to be working off of uh, a section drawing, um, a plan drawing, um, and an elevation or um, lateral section um, of uh, a nave bay at Chartres Cathedral. So let me get quickly get started here on the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to narrate over top. Um, and then also what I've done with this video is I have some spaces in it um, where uh, I just kind of tell you what step we're on. Um, so if you need to, this should be able to help you a little bit. Uh, to remember what, what step you're on. So the first thing that we're going to do, as it says here, is we're going to copy the design from a shared project um, into your own tutori tutorials project. So I created a project called Shared Project or Gothic Cathedral's Shared Projects. Um, and so that project has a design in it that uh, basically has all of the drawings aligned in it, and I just need you to move it uh, into your own project folder. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. So here's an example of you all have had this shared with you already. So you go down, right click, go to copy. Then you're going to select your, so it wouldn't say triplet, it would have your last name. And then you're going to copy that design over into your other project. So now, of course, you need to switch your project over to the one that you just copied, right? So if you double click on that, you should be ready to go. Um, now you can rename this um, however you want. So the next thing that we're going to do uh, is just have a really quick look and spin around the view so that you all can see the difference between a cr cross transverse section um, and uh, the plan and the elevation um, that you're going to see. So they're all really aligned right at the crossing of one of the piers. So I'm just going to zoom around a little bit and kind of show you what this looks like. These have all been, uh, all of these uh, canvases have been made uh, slightly transparent and you can see the red lines where they cross uh, that pier. All right, that means that they're all lined up. And I just wanted to do this ahead of time for you. You all know how to do this because you've done it once before, um, at least for the, the plan drawing uh, in tutorial one. So the next step for us is we're gonna create an offset construction plane that's gonna align to the front face of the wall of the elevation. What that means is we're gonna, take the, the uh, canvas that we already have and just sort of push off from it a little bit so that we're, we're drawing on the correct plane because the, the plane that we want to be drawing on is not going to be dead center in the middle of the, um, uh, of the pier. We're going to want it on the front face where we have, um, essentially think of it as, as the face or the, the plane where the spandrels are um, for the church. Um, so then you're going to draw a, a few construction lines, um, some sketches, and this is a useful number to remember. The bay is exactly is going to be exactly seven meters wide. I've done that on purpose. It probably is not exactly seven meters, just to just so you know. Good. Okay, so I'm going to select, and you're going to see in just a moment that we're going to go to the construction plane, and we're going to select this front face. And then we're just going to sort of space it off. And I'm going to change the color a little bit so I can see things. Um, just have a look at it. And then I'm going to, you can see I hit the back button. And you can see this orange line. This is really hard to see. But what we're trying to do is match it roughly to that, right where that kind of center pier meets and right right where the spandrels are for that arcade. Okay, So it's it's a rough estimate of what you need to do. Now you have something that you can click on to create a new a new sketch. Here's what I just did. Okay, so now we're going to be drawing just slightly ahead of where the drawing is, which is helpful. So I'm just going to start with a simple rectangle tool. I'm going to draw it first, and then type seven meters because I know that answer already for the width of the bay coming from the origin. And then I'm just going to roughly get this to the top of the capital. And I'm just going to do a few more so that they, I'm eyeballing at this point. The only thing that's really going to be set is I'm always going to have the same width. And this is what, what you might call blocking out. Okay, so we're just really blocking out 
the uh, three levels of the building with a few more guidelines for us, like the tops of capitals and things like that and bottoms of capitals. Another useful uh, line is the center line. So we're going to have that as well. And pretty soon here, I'm going to turn everything. There we go. Double clicking and turn everything into a construction line. You can also just hit the X key after you've selected them. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to draw the left side of what I'm calling a stilted arch, right? So a stilted arch is, think of like a lancet as being similar to a stilted arch. It doesn't come all the way down, um, the arched part of it doesn't come all the way down and spring right from the top of the capital. It has this sort of vertical lines first, and then it hits the capital. So that's, that's just a new kind of thing that we haven't really uh, messed around with too much. But we really want to make sure that it, it stays um, uh, nice and clean as well. And by, by saying staying clean, what I mean is that it's going to be tangent to the vertical line, okay? And we'll see what that means in a second. Tangent, if you remember from geometry, means that this arch or this circle uh, that creates this arch um, will only touch that uh, each of those vertical lines in one location, right? So it is, and for our purposes, it means that it's going to flow very, very cleanly. All right, so we're just drawing the, the stilt, essentially, and I'm guessing that right at the top there, that's where I think it's the arch is actually going to spring. Okay, so then I all I'm doing to, to make this really quick, really quick, is you can see I use a different, uh, a different tool on this. Um, so if I, if I back up for just a moment, I want to make sure that we all get this. I'm using a, a different tool than we had in the, in the past. We might have used the center uh, point arch. Um, this time we're using a two-point arch, and it knows exactly where to uh, to stop when I grab it, because you're going to get a little symbol right here that that looks like a circle with a line attached to it, and that's going to tell me that it's tangent, right? So this is the sort of much much more quick and dirty way of making sure that you get uh, the line as you want it. So you see how that turned tangent? Okay, that's the key. So I drew it first. Let me go back to this one more time. So I will. Go to arc, two point arc, one, two, and then bring it out. And that's it. Okay, it looks like that's the three point arc technically. Sorry, I should I should have been clearer about that. Um, but you'll see. Okay, so just to make this even faster, we're just gonna mirror the other side. Okay, good, we're getting getting somewhere. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to name the sketch the offset elevation sketch or something similar. Okay, so this is going to help you. There are a lot of sketches in this tutorial, so this is really going to help you find it later. Um, so you can create a new sketch really right on top of that elevation plane um, near the design's kind of origin point, which we used in the very beginning when we first set the width of the bay. Um, so what we're going to do, what you're going to do then is you're going to trace the base profile. Remember those base profiles roughly with the line tool. Right. So right down here, this is a base profile right there. Okay, that's very helpful for us. So I'm going to quickly just rough this out and I'm going to do this in kind of a strange way, I'm going to leave it pointy at first, and then I'm going to use a tool called the fillet to round off those kind of rough edges that I don't really like. And you can see I'm doing something kind of peculiar here where I'm just, I'm not really going all the way back to the origin. So here's where we use the fillet tool to round off um, parts of the base profile. So I go up to create, uh, sorry, modify and, and fill it. And then I'm just going to click on, on one of the points and then bring it in a little bit. And you can see when this little line started to pull out too far, I just backed it up a little bit. And that'll do the trick for now. That's okay. I don't love that, but it's, it's okay. Okay, this is a pretty big step, so I'll read through this. So what, what you're going to do is now you're going to, you've sketched the base profile. Now you need to uh, sketch a section 
or a path for that profile to, to move around. So what that means is it, when I say a section, I'm imagining that we're cutting uh, a plane directly through the base of uh, the base of the, uh, the pier. And then you're going to revolve this object um, or uh, use it as a path around, around that shape. Um, the one that you already drew. So what we're going to say, we're going to create this rectangular extension from this octagon um, with a two-point rectangle tool. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to really rough it out with a bunch of little two-point rectangles to do it quickly. Um, and then the, the key with this is to make sure that you hover the cursor over the second point in the octagon side to get this dotted green guide. Okay, so I'm going to say that. That's not going to make sense until you see it. But just be aware that that is the way that I'm going to make sure that everything lines up correctly. Um, and then finally, we're going to trim out the parts. So let's see that. The goal here is to get this to be a seamless single object, which is why we're eventually going to trim it. But we want to make sure that everything is relatively simple when we start. So this is going to be a, basically, this is going to be an octagon, right? So let me pause quickly. When I say it's an octagon, it means that there's, there is a, a colonnette here attached to this piece. There is a rounded area right here, another colonnette attached to that. And as you move around, you can see that this forms an octagon. Um, so I'm going to, you can see that I'm, I'm at six right now, but it's about to be eight. There you go. Okay. So from the origin, that's a nice way to just sort of roughly get your idea of what your your shape is going to be like. Now the other thing you may notice is hey this doesn't seem to be perfectly corresponding to this drawing. Well the drawing resolution is not great number one and number two these things you can see that they're not even especially clear because right there doesn't seem like this even matches that. So we're going to do uh, something more along the lines of what we really uh, what we want it to be rather than what we're actually getting from the drawing. So let me go backwards really quickly just for a moment. And so I can show you these squares. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going clicking once. Now I'm hovering over this spot and then I'm pulling away. So you see there's a green, there's a little bit of a green arrow and then I'm typing in 0.45. Okay. And then each one of these, of course, if I do the same thing, they will be identical. And you'll have something that is uh, symmetrical on all sides. If that's just a little bit of a trick and it's not as clear, you can see that it'll snap when you're doing it right. So you don't, you don't click on that second one. You just sort of hover over it and then it'll give you the guide. All right, and I'm just hitting the T key for trim and then I'm trimming out the middle. And if you've done it right, you sh it should look like that. Good, now we actually have something that we can use. And we're going to sweep it. Okay, that's the word I was thinking of, the tool I was thinking of, the sweep tool. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the canvases just so I can see better. Um, really quickly, let me go back to show you where the, where the sweep tool is, in case you missed that. So that's just another one right up here under create and then sweep and it's a single path and it says okay where's the profile and then where's the path so you selected the profile first then you clicked it path and then you went through that's a little fast but what it'll do is it'll help you i think right here you selected path and then you just go around it okay and it should be clean um, this this can be a little difficult so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push and pull these pieces um, we're going to select the faces on the interior that are hollow, and then you're going to push through. You really want to make sure that all of these extrude settings are set to join so that you don't create like a whole bunch of little objects in the middle. Um, they're basically going to join to each other. Let's join. So I've hit the extrude tool, and I don't want cut. I want join for sure. And I'm just going to do this a handful of times. Pull it through. Go to join, hit OK, and I'm going to do it one, two more times. And that just gets this nice and clean. Um, that is purely aesthetic on my point. It's just good 3D modeling not to have hollow objects like that. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw, um, because that was just the base, we're, we're also going to, there's also going to be a rounded pier kind of on top of this that has colonnettes. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a new shaft section on top of that base body. Okay, so think of it as, you know, sort of the plinth has been done, but we still need to do the base. Um, and we're going to have uh, octagonal colonnettes with a rounded pier. Okay, this is something we remember from Chartres Cathedral, um, that that actually alternates. We're not going to bother with the alternation, um, just to make this a little faster, but you should remember that it alternates between um, rounded colonnettes and octagonal colonnettes. Okay, so I just drew a very quick, this is a, a this is a trick. Um, I drew a circle out to this edge so that I had something to snap to so that I knew that it would it would be the right shape. The next thing I did is I created a center point uh, rectangle or a center point um, polygon and I just changed the number of sides to four because what I liked about that is that it, it gave me a nice um, object right here with a line that will give me uh, a place where I can add uh, the colonnettes um, and I have midpoints right here which are very useful to have um, it does a lot of things but it's it's really they're just guides and this is the circumscribed polygon this is another tool um, that I really like so you can see right there what I did was I, I got the I hovered over the center, moved over to this one position where, uh, where the circle and this axis hit, and then I drew um, the circumscribed polygon out to meet the the corner of the square. Okay, so let me just run that back really quickly. I'll do it one more time. All right, so we're going to go and hit create polygon circumscribed polygon and from you can see I hover over and you see when it turns to an X that means that there's an intersection right there and then I pull it out until it hits which ends up being 0.366 and I'm going to say that it has eight sides and I'm just going to do the same thing in each of these locations all right so from the intersection of the axes and the circle out to that corner. And look at that. Not bad. If I, if I do it in this way, it should be fairly uh, clear. So now I'm just doing what I did before. I did, I'm going to do some quick trimming. Good. There's just a few things that hang over. And again, it's always a good idea to hit the select button and then click on it to see if you have one single area. Okay, so the next step, step 10, we're going to extrude the bottom of the shaft slash the top of the base in two stages. Um, so we're going we're gonna to do this rather than doing the sweep tool where we sort of wrapped it around. We're going to be doing a couple of stages and then doing a fillet in 3D. Um, so that's going to be a little bit different than doing a fillet on a sketch. Um, and you'll see that uh, in just a second. And then we're just going to pull the rest of the, the shaft um, up from there. So one step, and I'm going to make this kind of jump out. And you can see my taper angle is going to be 45. So that's going to give me the points that I'm going to need. If you just bear with me for a moment, that'll give me the points that I need to round everything off later. Um, this is useful. So just bear with me for a moment here. And I'm just renaming these. I think this is helpful just so I don't lose track of uh, the different bodies that I've created. So being just being clear here, what I did is you can see right, right in just a moment, you're going to notice that I, I'm going to create okay, 45 degrees. There it is. So I'm going to edit this and make sure that I created a new body. So you can tell even I made a mistake there. So you can see I wanted this to be a totally separate object from that. Um, so I just really quickly went to edit sketch and changed that. Uh, sorry, uh, edit feature and changed that. All right, so I'm going to pull this back up, and as you might imagine, I'm just going to make it go up point, uh, 0.75 here, and then I'm just going to bring it in 45 degrees, and now it'll give me this sort of rough idea of what I need. 
and I can round that a little bit later. So let's pull this up, and I'm just going to end this right at the base. Now I'm simplifying all of these uh, the, these columns. Um, they, these column capitals are um, or peer capitals are are really just they're very decorative, and I'm not going to be 3D modeling those for now. I think we just are trying to get things blocked out. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to select the edges on the base that's sort of pointed parts I keep mentioning. Um, we are going to double click around here. And I think you, it may be just that it's not it's not working perfectly to double click. You should be able to select this entire um, chain um, with a double click, but sometimes uh, you just have to do it manually. So that helps to hold down the shift button, you know, with your mouse and uh, and and uh, left clicking and, and running around um, uh, to, to orbit around it. So now we're going to use the fillet tool. Finally, um, I was one step ahead of myself there. So we have all of those selected. Now we're just going to hit fillet. And this is where I want to get really close to it because I don't want to go too far with that fillet. You can see there's a certain kind of sweet spot. And I, I kind of like the way that looks right there. That'll that'll work for us. Good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create that abacus. Uh, remember, the very top of the peer capital. Um, we're going to use the extrude tool for that. So it's really important that uh, you use the extent, uh, and you'll see it as an option in the, the extrusion. Um, you're going to say that you're going to extrude it to an object option so that you extrude the abacus to the exact measurement of the bottom of the arcade arch. We Remember, we already did a measurement of the bottom of the arcade arch, so I'll show you that just a moment here okay so from the top we're going to use the extrusion tool in a second here and you can see we have some guides which is really helpful so we're like but you know how high is that we don't know it's really easy to say i'm going to taper this 30 degrees and then my distance i'm going to pull down right where it says distance okay that's a that's a a rough guess okay so this is pretending to be a cushion capital then we're going to do it one more time and this is where we do it okay so go to distance and you can see that's sort of you know it's really hard to guess we want this to be really exact so i'm going to say two object and then all i did was i clicked on this one bottom piece right so to make sure i got it right watch right over here distance two object and then i click that point and that brings it perfectly up just a, it's a nice uh, trick to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Um, so the next, this is a pretty long step. So we're going to select the plane that's sh shared by the transverse section canvas. Okay. Remember the transverse section is the one that goes across like a transverse arch, right? It goes across the entire nave, um, not the elevation that we've been mostly looking at so far. Um, so we're going to select that plane. We're, ref we're roughly going to sketch the profile for the arcade arch based on a section that is in that transverse section canvas. Okay, You'll see what I mean in a moment. This is the thing that you almost never do in Fusion, which is we're actually going to end up moving that, ob that sketch. Normally, you, uh, you select your plane, you draw on that, on that plane, and you leave it. Th in this case, we're actually going to rotate it as well as move it. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little tricky right here. So I want to make sure everybody gets this right. And then we're going to round off the stuff with the fillets, but that'll, that'll be easy. OK, so have a look here. So what we're looking at, this is that transverse section, right? We're gonna go, I'm going to call it a cross section. OK, so I'm going to use this, right? Look at this really kind of careful, fiddly thing. Um, that is what's going on with this sometimes what's, uh, what call, what's called rolled molding. Okay, so it, it is, it's rolled around that arcade arch that gives it those nice sort of soft and then linear parts. Um, but we really want to use this as a guide. So again, just as we did in the base profile, I'm just going to get this really roughly in. And then I'm going to use the fillet tool to quickly round it. Now, if you wanted to, you could be much more careful than I'm being... Um, and you could, there's, there's a hundred ways that you could do this. You don't have to do this exactly the way that I'm doing it, but I'm just sort of guessing at some of the places where the points are going to be. And you can see that I'm putting the points well beyond where they need to be because they're going to fill it back, um, in a bit. So 
So I definitely admit that what this looks like at the moment is the world's worst tracer, which is fine. Okay, so we still have to do the fillets. So I'm going to click on that fillet tool and just make sure I don't go too far with it. That's the key. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. And you'll notice that I'm selecting... If I want to do a fillet, I can actually move things. You can see that's that might might cause some problems right there, but that's okay for now. Each time I'm using the fillet tool again, because if you just keep doing the same thing, you'll notice that both pieces will be will have the same radius. So if you do all three of those and you think that that's fine, you'll notice all three of them move at the same time. And if I want a completely different thing, I'll just select the object and then fill it again. And that, that's okay. Not my best. You can see I just don't want those to cross. Yeah. So I'm zooming in there. That's just kind of a weird thing. Um, I probably would go back and do that again, but just to be kind of quick here, I'm gonna do this quick and dirty. All right, and that's probably going to be the last one, right? there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a, a quick mirror. So I'm going to double click on everything. It should select it all. And then I'm just going to select mirror and I'm going to use the mirror line and we're done. Okay, we've done mirroring before, so I'm not going to stop that. But what you should get and hopefully now I'm going to pa press pause here. What you definitely should be getting is because this is a construction line, this should all be one piece. Okay, that's kind of important. You can see it highlights that way. And you have a nice point right there in the center, which we're going to need. Okay. All right, so we're going to want that to be a center point, which is fine. So all of this is one piece. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this arcade arch 90 degrees so it's parallel to the ground plane, so the XZ plane, um, rather than in that vertical plane. This is tricky. Okay, so what we're going to do is say move, rotate. I'm going to hit rotate, select my axis, and I'm going to rotate it on that bottom axis. And it, it snapped to 90 degrees, okay? So what we're going to want to do is sweep this arch profile along the arcade arch path, but we really need to project the original um, offset arcade path into a position on the center of the pier. So we need to essentially push this thing down and into the right position um, before it gets swept. I'll explain. That will be visually clearer than when I say it out loud. Um, so we're going to return to the original sketch for the base profile. Um, and project this arch path onto this plane. Okay, so just bear with me if that sounds like mumbo jumbo, it's fine. You'll see in just a moment. Okay, so we're selecting all of these pieces. All right, and we're gonna project it back, okay? So we originally drew it, remember, right where the um, where the, uh, the spandrels were and not directly on um, uh, in, this, in the dead center of the pier. But in this case, we're gonna want them in the dead center of the pier, okay? We wanted both, both copies of that. So while we're editing this arcade profile sketch, okay, so we need to be in the arcade profile sketch um, let me go back to that just very quickly here. So we've just projected this, and now you'll see as I turn the camera, you'll have one in blue and one in purple. Um, and I'll press pause in just a moment here. Okay, right there. So what, you, what we've done is we've taken the blue one and we've projected it back into right here in the dead center of the pier, because we need both copies of this. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this arcade um, arch 
section that we drew in an in a completely different position and we're going to be gluing it down onto this point okay so let's do that so we're, while we're editing this arcade profile sketch we're going to double click one of the edge to select all of the outer edges of the profile okay so just as you as you've seen then you're going to move copy the center point of the sculpted portion of the arcade okay so the, the arcade profile is going to move from the bottom left point on the arcade to the top of the pier um, this is what's called the point to point move option you actually have to to check create a copy checkbox or the sketch isn't going to move correctly this is just sort of a wonky thing this is you're starting to get the idea this is why people don't normally move sketches in, in um in Fusion 360, and this is why it's a little weird. Okay, so I'm inside the sketch. All right, so right now it says we're we're editing that sketch. So I am right here editing that sketch, um, and I'm gonna just click everything, select it all. I'm gonna double click on the edge to make sure, and I'm gonna say move copy. And right there, I hit point to point, and I'm gonna click an origin and a target. Okay, so let's click the origin first, and that'll be the center. Then we're gonna make sure we create a copy. Then we select the target point. Then you see it moves it down, makes a copy of it and puts it right where we need it to be. Then we can hit okay. All right, this is a section. Okay, so this is, um, you can just follow along. And uh, when you see that you're right about at this section of the, of about halfway through the uh, tutorial, this is something you might wanna watch a couple of times, okay? This is critical. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sweep the arch profile along the arch path for this arcade. Okay, so we have it. If everything is snapped correctly, we should be totally fine. And I'm just gonna keep selecting those pieces. I have to select all four and then I hit new body and I hit okay. Okay, so this, if there's any issue with the earlier drawing, if there's like an arch path, sometimes they get moved. Um, you'll see, kind of see next. Um, you can also go back and edit the earlier sketch in the drawing history. Um, so I will show you now, um, if you made any mistakes, this is what you might be able to do um, to fix your problem. Um, so this is something I always wanna put in, in this particular tutorial because thus far I have not, um, you can see there was like a mistake up here um, and I wanted to go all the way back. So I right clicked on this sketch way down here and I said, edit sketch. So I'm, I'm back in time right now. So I wanna make sure that I don't do anything too dramatic. I mean, remember it's the Michael J. Fox uh, rule. Um, anything that you do, it's gonna affect the future. So you need, need to make sure um, that you do this correctly. So in my case, I made a mistake earlier on and I wanted to make sure that I corrected it. Um, so I wanted to make, just make sure that this thing actually bisected correctly. And I'm just gonna make a few little moves here. So this is really just cleanup. I just mirrored that piece. And now when we go back into the future, we can make sure that the sketches are correct. I can delete anything I don't want anymore. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got we've got everything that we need, I think. I'm going to finish that sketch. And when I go back, I just need to reselect everything again. So I'm going to go and select that path one more. There you go. All right. So that's that's probably a little bit better. Um, so that's the end of the sort of if you made a mistake thing. Um, that's just sort of showing you how to do that. Um, so sketch guides. For, you're going to sketch guides for the height of the triforium arches and the location of the center of each of the triforium columns. Okay. This is we're going to use something called the sketch dimension. Um, to uh, to do that so you actually get a vertical line in the same distance apart after each line is drawn and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sketch the triforium arches using the diagonal and perpendicular technique um, which you guys have seen already um, that's how we take an isosceles triangle and we try to find the um, center points for the arcs um, to get our pointed arches All right, we're moving along. Okay, now up to the Triforium. I'm going to select, remember I was drawing on that, that plane before. 
So I'm going back in time just a little bit to make sure that I get this, that these are all in the right place. So I'm going to go and I'm going to cut a nice line right where the tops of these, and it's just a guideline, right where the tops of these uh, triforium arches hit, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to draw a vertical line right where I think that ought to be. I just right through one of these. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm choosing this one first. And then I'm just going to do a quick sketch dimension. And that tells me 1.4. So I'm going to change that dimension to 1.4 even. And I'm going to do the same thing to each of these. Okay, so that they are all 1.4 apart. Once you've done two, now you can do a quick mirror or do the same thing over again. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we really only need these so that we can do one set of arches. All right. And now I'm just going to do that familiar trick. We're going to draw a quick triangle, get our center point. Okay, make sure that all of these are construction lines. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So from here to here, and I can actually re really quickly just mirror that, or we can do the our arc first and then mirror after. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to do the mirror first, and then the next step, we're going to have to figure out how to do So I'm doing a trick where I'm just, I don't really, it doesn't really matter where. Um, I'm just making sure that these are perpendicular right here. That this is perpendicular to that. And where this crosses, that's where, that's what we really care about. So I could trim these out or I could just use their intersection. Um, it doesn't really matter. Okay, use our center point arc. I'm just using the intersection for that. I'm going to do the same thing here. That's just a quick trick to use a coincident um, to get my point. I was just having trouble clicking on it. And that should do it. And then I'm just going to wait for a moment for that to save. Good. Okay, we have almost everything we need. For the arch um, we still need to create a profile to sweep that so we're roughly going to sketch the profile of the triforium column um, so that it it uh, it snaps all right let me go back to that really quickly just so we get this there's a few things in here so we're going to sketch the profile of the triforium column so so that it, it snaps the vertical guideline that you already drew we're going to use the fillet tool to smooth uh, the rough edges there should be a space there um, we're going to select the finished profile, then we're going to use the revolve tool. So this is this is really showing off, right? We're going to just take, we're going to use every tool in, in the toolbox for this. So we're going to use a revolve tool to just create those triforium columns um, using the really the, the last of our, our most significant uh, modeling tools for that. So you'll see that in just a moment. This is sort of, I mean, think of the revolve as sort of like a lathe. All right, so I'm just going to really, I mean, this is going to go kind of quickly. I'm just going to really roughly get this out. And we're pretending that this is, now this is not how, as we know, this is not how these crockets work. Um, they really, I mean, I'm trying to turn these into sort of like spindly cushion capitals. They don't, this is not a gothic thing. Um, but for this, just to sort of simplify what we're doing, I wanted to make sure that um, we use the revolve tool for this. And I'm just going to finish it all the way down. So this is 
really showing off that there are lots of ways to do this. Um, if you hold down the um, the button, you can get you can get something to to sort of arch automatically. Um, I just kind of wanted to clean that up a little bit and just bring that back. I think that'll have to do. I'm just kind of cleaning things up a little. I'm going to bring that up. Now th these we can fill it. I'm just trying to show you a few different ways of doing things. Um, the ability to to create a rounded uh, arch while you're drawing is kind of like a that's kind of like a pro tip. That's where you sort of hold and drag as you're doing it, and it it can be just so difficult. I, I find that it's just so hard to get exactly what you want with that tool. It's not. I honestly don't think it's the best. Um, vector drawing tool out there in the world. Um, but so I, I find it just easier to just draw it really roughly and then use fillets for most of the time. So good, we've got our profile. Now we're gonna need to do a quick revolve. We also have a line that we can use as the axis for it. So I'm gonna go down to modify. I'm sorry, it's, it's under create, create revolve. And I did that super quick. Uh, let me just quickly run back. You guys can do this as well. Um, we're gonna go to create. Modify, create, sorry, it's actually under create. Create, revolve. We have the axis, we click on the axis, and we're done. So the reason that happened is because I already had the profile selected. All right. And pretty soon it's going to be time to um, to look at the, at the, um, sorry, at the bodies and give them a name. So we're going to name this, you know, triforium column, something along those lines. Um, and this is me kind of correcting because these actually aren't these these are square right here. They're not circular. So I wanted to just sort of just make a quick edit and you know you don't I, I would prefer it if you did do it this way because really these are on top of sort of square plinths. Um, these are rounded and then this is square. Um, so I just wanted and you can kind of tell that that's the case because of this part of the drawing here. Um, but I just you know I just wanted to be kind of a perfectionist with that. So then the rectilinear pattern tool is really, really powerful. This is another one to, to keep in mind. This is how you would create lots and lots of copies across a line or across a grid. And you're going to make these 1.4 meters apart. Okay, so I named that triforium column quickly. And I'm just going to go, I always go to modify first, but I want to go to rectangular pattern under create. And you can see there's a bunch of options over here under rectangular pattern. I'm going to, to go with spacing. And as I said, we're going to go 1.4 meters apart and it's just instantly going to create them. And I can say, I want this to be symmetrical and I want them to go in that one direction. Okay. We want four of them. Three, let's see. Yeah, 1.4, and then we have to just add one more at the end. Um, I just figured that's probably the easiest way to do it. Not the most elegant uh, way to do this. There we go. We need five total, and they're 1.4 apart. Okay, so if, that, if you're looking at those settings and you're like, what did he do? This is it, okay? So... Uh, I'm going to change this to 5. We're going to keep it at 1.4. I selected the center column um, because that's the first one that I made. I made it symmetric, so it's going to go in both directions. Um, good. And then 5. And you can actually check on these little boxes if you'd like, if you want to like uh, not create one that you already had set um, here. You can just sort of turn it off. Good. We want to keep all those. Okay, so now we're going to create an arch profile directly on top of the Triforium column using, um, this is one of our last tools, the spline tool, which I think is a, is a nice one. Um, it isn't very mathematical. It doesn't sort of work in the same way that you would with a compass. So I don't use it a lot. Um, but for something like this, I think it, it's just kind of fun to try something new. So we're going to sweep the new profile uh, along that triumph. 
uh, triforium arch path. Um, so these, this is a really kind of spindly looking profile. So I, I figured the, the spline was, was good enough. Um, and then we're going to create that rectilinear pa pattern again. You, you've already seen how to do this. So I'm going to select the top of that triforium column capital. Okay, we're looking straight on top of it. So that's the plane that we're drawing on. Okay, I'm going to turn off those canvases so I can see a little bit better. And I'm going to change my view. So rather than drawing directly from the top view, I changed, I held down shift and middle mouse just so I could change my view just a little bit so I could see what I was doing a little bit better. So I'm just going to quickly create some guides. Okay, and then I'm just going to add a few constraints onto them. I'm going to make sure that they are equal. And this is a very important point to snap to because we need it so that uh, when this thing arches over that it'll look um, like it belongs. There you go. Okay, so what I did here is I just used that really funny spline tool and you may, if you've used something like Adobe Illustrator, this might be something that um, you've used before. And this is, it, it has these little handles and you can uh, kind of play with it that way. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, you know, I, I think it's useful for us to know that, you know, this kind of a tool, because it's so free flowing and everything, this is unlikely that, you know, medieval sculptors are going to be using a thing like that. Um, because you can't really repeat it very easily, right? So what can you repeat? Well, you can repeat basic geometry. Um, so that's the kind of lesson that we want here. So we're just going to do quick lines so that we can mirror that. Okay, so I just deleted that and we're just going to do a quick mirror. And that should do it. Now I can go and select that middle line and turn it into a construction line. Okay, so just got a little bit weird there, but you can see once I stop moving, here we go. We have one piece, that's what we're really going for, and we want to sh uh, sweep that across our good, our guide there, okay? So that's our arch path, and our arch profile was pushed around the arch path. Good. Okay, so now we have something, again, just like everything else, we're going to keep saying that we're going to just create a rectangular pattern, and we're probably going to have to do this twice. Um, in this case, we're going to want to cut that down to 2, and we know that it needs to be 1.4, because that's the gap between all of these lines. It's really helped to have those some of those uh, measurements in your in your brain, I think. Okay, so in this case, we'll go... 1.4 and there'll be three of them total okay so now we have all of our triforium arches this is going good okay so we're going to use projections um, and a few new lines to create walls and the spandrels so those triangular remember the spandrels of triangular flat spaces between arches um, we're going to extrude wall shapes as separate bodies for the triforium and the arcade um, and you can use the transverse section view to know really how far that you need to pull that wall so that that'll be i think intelligible uh, once you actually try it. All right, so I'm going to select that. I'm just going to make sure that we, we give our, our different sketches, you know, new names so that we can go find them again. I'm going to call this the Triforium Column Profile. And we're going to call this one the Triforium Arch Profile. Okay, just so we don't lose track of all of our stuff. Okay, so I'm going to select that first construction plane. 
And remember, this is where the spandrel. So that's why we created that in the beginning. We still had to, to even use the other one before that. But look, we've got a whole bunch of lines in here that we can use to project front. Okay, so it, this is really, really nice to have all of these lines so we don't have to do the sketching. Um, it's just going to remember these outer parts. So I'm just grabbing anything that I want to be um, on this level. Okay, so on this plane. So any guides that I might need. Okay, just num just making absolutely sure I select everything that I think I might need. Okay, and I just hit project and I projected those. So you can see now we've got this nice kind of sketch that has lots of drawing, uh, drawing started that we can use just to do something nice and clean and flat. So I'm just going to sort of sketch this out. This is a little confusing, but um, bear with me for just a moment. We're just going to be cutting some, some flat spandrels out of these shapes that already exist. Okay, so now you can see that that just instantly created the flat parts of the wall. Okay, which is good. Okay, and what's nice is that it is at the correct level, right? It's behind the response. And we're going to call that a new body. And you can see at when, now that we're looking at this section, right, that is how thin the passage in the triforium is. And we're going out to the edge of this wall right here. That's the thickness that we want. You know, we could keep going and, and, and do another arch uh, out this way as well for, for the vault, but we're gonna kind of stop just with this sort of part of the elevation here. Okay, and the last thing I'll, I'll end up doing for the whole tutorial, and I'll leave you all to do the, the um, the Claire story level, I think, really, um, you know, with the, the window and everything um, as, as homework. Um, but we are going to need to do um, uh, just a little bit of work on those that sort of little 3D box. Um, this is the another tool that you don't actually even use a sketch for. You just create little boxes. I'll show you that quickly. And then the last thing we need is we need to do those response. So once we create these little boxes, Okay, we're going to select the plane that we want them on, and I'm just going to hit create. There's like a little box icon. And I'm just going to, in this top view, I'm just going to sort of just generally guess where it needs to be. This is, this is the sort of quick and dirty. Um, and notice that it's on join right now. We don't want that, um, but I will fix that in just a moment. Now, it wasn't the most elegant. It looks to me like I actually pushed that box a little bit too high. Um, I brought it up a little high. I think I might have clicked on the long, wrong button, but that it really, it's okay. So I'm just making a quick pattern. 1.4 again. And so each of these are roughly going to be the same. I have to do it one more time and go the other direction. Since we had a, I started on the wrong. It didn't start in the middle, so I couldn't have done the symmetrical technique. Just say 1.4, negative 1.4 in that case, and now we're good. Okay, so let's move back, uh, move the columns back so that they fit in the center of the wall, because right now they're kind of pushed forward. Um, and we can create a, a copy of the pier shaft and base and move it about 7 meters over to the left. We'll do that in just a moment. So all of these objects, I just selected them over here in, in this... I'm going to select them here as well. You can select them here as well as kind of using the selection tool. So we're going to mirror that over just for fun. Um, as we know with alt alternation, this is not actually a mirror because remember we had uh, rounded colonnettes on a um, on a polygonal um, kind of drum pier. Um, 
at, at Shard Cathedral. So this isn't historically correct, but it'll do for just now, just for now. Just I want to make sure I, I mention that to you all. Um, so you all are going to do the string courses um, and the response. Um, the response you can do in any way that you'd like. Um, so let me go back just a little bit so we can get a good view. And I'll leave you at, at this at the end of the tutorial because I think it's gotten a little bit long as always. Um, hold on just a moment. I'm going to make sure that we get a good view. So what you're going to do is you're going to be creating, you can use any of the techniques we've already done. You can um, you can draw the, the response by doing a sketch right on the top of this right here um, just as you drew you know the profile for the or you projected the profile for for the arcade arch you could draw another one right here and push these up um, you could do uh, you could you could simply draw them and then pull them up uh, and then keep changing the size of them um, when by by using the um, extrude tool a bunch of different times or if you wanted to, you could do a, a sweep around the base and then do it just as we did uh, um, on the bottom and just have only the these parts of the response um, be extrusions and have like a separate base if you'd like. Um, there's really any way, there's so many ways to do this that I want you all to just sort of experiment uh, just a little bit on this. And if you if you can, please also try to figure out what what you're going to do. You can use your old sketches and just give me a basic idea of what the the Claire story level is going to look like. Um, remembering that your responds are going to end right about there. OK, so um, I will show you what a finished um, product looks like. Okay, so these little parts, all right, let me go right to here and I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit pause. Okay, let me pause on this. So this is what you're going to need to do for homework. Um, create that triforium passage in the thickness of the wall. That's sort of the last thing I'd like you to do. Um, the triumphant triforium arches that I, I drew were a little, a little bit small. It, you might want to make these like a little bit bigger um, so that they match the width of the triforium columns. Um, you can do this by going back in the history. That's kind of up to you if you if, if you want to try that. Um, so that's just like a, a it's a good habit to be able to go back in your history and make a change. Um, you can model the response um, up to the triforium level. Um, so you're going to pull those up. Now with the clear story, I would say number five would be extra credit. So with the clear story, just um, do that if you have time. Um, and I, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so um do what you can i will i will uh, share in class an example of um a finished product um and so uh, i think i'm just going to leave you all um right there so good luck and let me know if you have problems